the matter of Williams versus the trustees of Swansea University Pension and Assurance Scheme and another. Lord Calmworth will explain the decision of the court. Well, Mr. Williams was employed by Swansea University from 2000 until he retired for ill health reasons in June 2013. His medical condition qualified as a disability for the purposes of Section 6 of the Equality Act 2010. He had been an active member of the university's pension scheme throughout his employment. For the last three years, his working hours were, were reduced to his due to his disabilities. When he retired, he was working half his full-time hours. That's 17.5 hours a week. The appeal concerns a part of his pension, which under the scheme was calculated on the basis of his actual salary at the date of retirement. He argues that this involved disability discrimination under Section 15.1 of the Act, and therefore required justification. The question under that section is whether it involved him in being treated, quote, unfavorably because of something arising in consequence of his disability. Mr. Williams claims that the calculation of the enhancement based upon his final part-time salary rather than his full-time salary was unfavorable treatment because of something arising in consequence of his disabilities, namely his inability to work full-time. That contention succeeded in the Employment Tribunal, but failed in the Employment Appeal Tribunal and the Court of Appeal. The Supreme Court now unanimously dismisses the appeal in a judgment given by myself. The Court draws assistance from the guidance in the Equality and Human Rights Commission's Code of Practice as to the relatively low threshold of disadvantage sufficient to trigger the requirement to justify under Section 15. However, that does not help Mr. Williams. The relevant treatment in his case was the award of the pension, which was not itself unfavorable. Although its calculation reflected his reduced hours, there was no basis for a more favorable comparison. Had he been able to work full time, the consequence would have been not an enhanced entitlement, but no immediate right to a pension at all. In those circumstances, the award could not reasonably be regarded as in any sense unfavorable.